first of all, thanks for having me. Second of all, wow, what, what an act to follow some of the people um, on, and thanks for listening. So I'm going to talk about what I do and where I see the future of the subject. Um, it's worth bearing in mind that, you know, you'll see photos of like some really glorious kitchens that I, I've had, but they haven't come, you know, gifted to me. I've really had to graph them, but I'll talk more about that later. So this is where I see ourselves at the minute. So who I am, I mean, there's all these kind of things here. Roy said, look, let's know who you are and some highlights there. Things like I thought I was going to fail my first placement. No doubt about it. I was sure of it. I thought this isn't for me, but it changed. Um, things like skinning a deer. Um, second year of teaching we spoke to the fellow deer trust they brought a whole deer in had to clear it with the governors they wanted a blackout windows they wanted um, parental consent so that morning uh, it looked like something from csi solly hollers it was at the time and in came this deer in like a body bag with an arrow still sticking out of its chest uh, and we broke it down and we cooked it we did haunch we did a lovely tatar fantastic we've made some links with people like raymond blanc we staged mission star events um so lots going on, but actually what I really think about who I am is this. You can probably tell that you know I, I've grown up fairly okay. Um, I went to a great school. I've had lots of opportunities. But what really irks me is, is that we've got to level the playing field. And I think more than any subject in any building, we can do that. Um, I think we can enhance cultural capital. I think we can bring skills from every other subject through our door that are far more engaging. And I said at parents' evening, we haven't got a hard sell like maths. Most kids come to us, and as Ewan clarified, thank you for that, Ewan, that um, you know, 90% of the kids enjoy the practical lessons. Well, what a great vehicle um, to teach these young people all these skills. There you can see a little photo. I'm teaching them about fermentation in year seven, uh, about yeast fermentation, and all you need are some balloons, some Haribo, a water gun, a hairdryer, and a boxing glove on a stick, and they too can understand fermentation. Um, one of the big initiatives I've done, I'm not going to show you all of it, is Grub Club. Um, hopefully the sounds will work. Grub Club came about purely accidentally when some um, boys who I didn't teach at my first school said, so we teach us to cook? And I said, yep, yeah, as long as you play some music for me. So this incarnation of a whole live band being in the corner of my room whilst we cooked fake away dishes in under 20 minutes, set a table, had little rules like, you can't serve yourself a drink, but you know what? You can serve someone else a drink. Um, we had inspirational guests, that kind of thing. I'll play a very short amount so you get a feeling and a flavour for it. And this is available on YouTube. So here we go. We've got some kids who are there and it is a very relaxed affair. I think we were cooking a paella. We had another school coming in to film us. Some stills. And of course, it isn't anything without live bands. And they do things like play Arctic Monkeys, and that's carried on at our current school. And it's a great mix of kids. It's a great atmosphere. And also you get loads of staff coming in. It just raises the profile of the subject. Um, so what we do here, so there's no rotations. Uh, we have one hour a week um, at Key Stage 3, which is essential. Those hours are tight, though. I was thinking about what lots of people have said and the dishes you can get done. And when you break it down, if you take out setup time and you take up clear up time and time for your pan to cool down so you can get it washed up, realistically, often you're only left with 20, 25 minutes cooking time. That's quite a challenge. And that's what makes us such skilled practitioners. Key stage four is three years. Um, I know split people's opinion. I'm a big fan of it. The fact that I spend my first half term with year nine doing butchery, preparing every type of fish under the sun, sauces, pastas, the lot, uh, really gets their... Um, skills up the ingredients are bought in uh, and everyone cooks there is never anybody sat at the back as much as i love the eat well guide nobody sat there coloring an eat well guide um, everyone is cooking and um, we secure the pp funding so we asked for 20 pound for the year at key stage three and that cooks about 16 dishes uh, and this is why i can't understand the government can't fund it it's bonkers you know under a quid a kid you know it can be done um and then we have unapologetically high standards in here Everything's done to a high standard. We call each other chef in here, and that's not an ego trip for me as much as some people may think it is, but it's a sign of respect, and it's a sign we want to aspire to that level. Um, and leadership know that as well, and they do respect the subject because we take it seriously, much like the food study said it needs to be taken seriously. That manifests into events like this. Um, in the first year of our new school being set up, I decided we should cook for our sister school's film festival night which is like the Oscars. We cooked the three course fine dining menu, 
that started off with a lobster raviola with champagne velouté and caviar. It moved on to a chicken ballotine and a poached chicken breast, uh, some garnish. And then the dessert was a uh, lemon panna cotta after Massimo Bottura. If anyone's seen Netflix, Chef's Table, watches, oops, I've dropped the lemon tart. And we try to do something like that. So again, I'll give you a short flavour of the kind of thing that we do. We do this every year until this little thing, COVID hit, and then we had to put a kibosh on it, but it's coming back this year. Oh, that would be a press play, wouldn't it? I'll pause it there. Uh, you get the idea. So that was actually a jackfruit bao bun we did as our starter. The kids made the bao buns in the morning. So my chefs are in from about 7.30 in the morning. That's the enthusiasm for it. And that's what we have to work with. Younger years do front of house and they're trained up. Some of our guests, uh, including a guy called Bob Cheshire, is an ex executive producer for Marvel Films. And he presents a lot of the awards. We've had video messages from Martin Freeman, Benedict Cumberbatch. It's a real marquee event. Um, and the food... Um, food is equal i think with uh, the standard of the event and it gets a lot of press uh, we're very proud of that and it has something that the kids want to aspire to um roy asked me to speak to some students but due to my technical inadequacies i couldn't drag them through from google drive but um i got some sound bites about what they thought cooking lessons should be what they think they are and some keywords that mimics what francis uh, analyzed so brilliantly and much better than i could do with a few sound bites so it's fun uh, Keen said, I like to learn new skills and to be treated like a chef. They want to be treated like they're experts already. They have that self-esteem, that self-efficacy. They believe in themselves. Mia, typical Mia, to the point, blunt, great kid. Interesting stuff I could do at home. So it's, it's that fine balance that we do that we aspire between great dishes, but that can be accessed at home. Cole's mum, she actually heard I was doing this and phoned me up and uh, there's a young man who a lot of time in our hub with our SEN team, but loves being in the kitchen. It's his confidence growing. And we have very much the attitude that things will burn, things will go wrong. Let's not cry about it, because if you get something wrong in maths, it's not the end of the world. You just go again. Um, Alfie, I think, echoes the sentiment around food science. I want to know how food works. He really enjoys that scientific element. And that's where we often engage our higher prior retainers, is by teaching to the top ensuring they've got a sound understanding about the you know the chemistry behind it jude uh, i should say he wants to use his knowledge he's a sportsman he loves knowing that having that nutritional knowledge so he can plan his snacks and things he does triathlon of course he does he's actually one of the lowest 10 percent income our setting is 42 percent of our children come from the lowest 10 percent of deprivation in the country he's one of those but because of our amazing PE department he does triathlon he uses his knowledge in here to prep snacks, rice cakes, that kind of thing. Storm again, another one straight to the point, very blunt. Um, we take boiling ingredients and make them taste really good. 
cost is an issue and we have to know how to elevate them. I take inspiration from a lot of chefs who do exactly that. Um, and then I started thinking about what my ideal curriculum is, and this one's going to be controversial. And I know when I did the article in The Guardian, I, I got a bit of, um, I believe the kids quit haters uh, from some portions of that fruit salad. I don't think it has a place. I mentioned that parents uh, open evening. I couldn't think of anything more bleak than opening a box with chopped fruit. Um, yeah, there's valid skills. And yes, we should be eating fruit, but I can't help but think there's more inspirational and exciting ways to teach them. It is all about the stakeholder. We're teaching young people skills that are so personal and personal to them. It should be modern and engaging and exciting. Uh, and we should embrace modern cooking methods. What's wrong? I mean, absolutely, ovens and hobs and a kettle and a frying pan, I, can grill, I couldn't agree more. But what's wrong with engaging in sous vide? You know, Audi do, a great sous vide one, it's 25 pounds. That's what we started with here. Um, I want to build responsible consumers. We don't throw anything away here. We do have a compost heap. We've started a new club and we've got a pop-up restaurant coming in the summer. So get your reservations in. Um, but uh, we, we don't waste anything. So if we peel potatoes, then it's not unusual for us to fry those up and the kids go to break with some crispy potato shards, you know, some smoked paprika on them. So we try and do that and acknowledge the changing landscape. I do think there should be fully funded ingredients for all. I still find it bizarre that we're the only subject where kids have to pay to learn. I don't see many kids coming in with the hydrochloric acid for science, their keyboard for music or the javelin for PE. The respect for subject is so important. Uh, we have to take it seriously so everybody else does. Um, I think, and I think the survey shows it, I speak to friends, they go, oh, you teach fruit salad, oh, you teach scones. And we've got to, and there is a laugh that, but we've got to shrug it off because, um, because we are better than that. And I see stuff on Facebook and I'm in awe what teachers are doing and I feel I'm playing catch up quite often uh, knowledge and skills focus there's got to be that balance you can't just cook they've got they've got to understand the theory behind it so that's where I see the curriculum and then this was the question I've been asking myself and I spoke with our executive head actually um, he pops into the kitchen quite often and not just to get coffee and I thought is there an insurmountable paradox between what the future of food education is and what it should be and by that I mean what are the barriers and can we overcome them um, and, and, and because we all know what it should be, we all got great ideas. Sorry about that. So these are some of the barriers I saw: facilities, technician support. I'm in school today because uh, my technician resigned over the summer due to health issues. Uh, amazing lady, but we only received ten hours, which I know is still more than many people. Um, so I've been on my own. Um, so it's what I've been listening. I've been folding laundry, measuring out couscous, and getting ready for those hour lessons next week. The skill level of our students, I've seen a decline over ten years. Um, what students can do now to what they could do 10 years ago. I have seen this client personally. It'd be interesting in the chat, see if people would agree with that. Teaching constraints. Um, I know that many schools have a very uh, systematic, rigorous approach to what they expect the lesson to look like. And sometimes it can be very hard to explain that a practical subject like this can't always adhere to that way. Um, our pedagogy is sound, I know that is, um, but it can't always fit with the template that's given to us. The budget, of course, it does come down to money. Um, anything we get, we have to put a case forward through for, and I strongly recommend the acronym SANE, uh, Situation, Actions, Impacts, Next Steps. If you present that, it's a very hard argument to refute. Um, respecting the curriculum time and lesson time. So are you given the time? Are you on a nine-week rotation? Are you still expected to make the same amount of progress in nine weeks as a subject would be in a year? Is that respect for your subject, or is that saying that, it's not as hard and it clearly it is and it's a misunderstanding from our leadership teams our heads can't always be uh, bashed that they are doing a tough job and there are all external pressures from feedback subjects and data and tables that will make appearance again this year the perception of heads and governors i i find a great pr exercise is to constantly get them in here give them an apron give them a set of ingredients invite the governors and cook for them uh, the parents Wow, that can be tough. I've had parents ask me, why am I cooking that foreign muck? No joke, it's not 78. I've actually had that statement given to me many times. Why aren't you doing British food in it? That was a particular favourite email and it still ended with poo emojis. Um, you've got to be strong in what you believe in. And we are. And we have parents on board. And one of the things is they realise we're on the same team, buying the ingredients in, not having that stress their kids telling them the night before, mom, dad, I need X, Y, Z explaining to them if they pay the £20 a year 
I'm saving them a couple of hundred pounds. So instead of our couscous dish costing them nine pounds, it's costing them 37p through the 20 pounds. Giving a crap, okay? Um, we are doing a great job, but we do have colleagues who don't care and we have to push them. We've got to talk about this push and pull and challenge each other. And are we doing the best we can? Non-specialists, uh, I work in a multi-academy trust. I'm thankful it's not one of the ones I've heard many horror stories about, but uh, many high non-specialists. Art teachers uh, are a favorite to be put to the food room and it's just seen as cooking, everybody cooks. Well, we all know that just isn't true. Um, and if we have got them, we need to bring them under our wing and bring them up with us. Uh, it's subject snobbery, there definitely is subject snobbery. Um, I know we all experience it and we've got to fight the corner. Um, career focus. So I have a lot of parents go, well, they don't want to be a chef. And I have to explain, as many people have explained better than me in this presentation, I think it was you and said, there's so many more careers they can go into. And it's showing them that choose food, do food, throw yourself into it. It doesn't mean you have to just be a stove monkey. There's so much more to it. And of course, there is the academic snobbery. We fit in the foundation subjects. Yet, like I said before, I've had students go into a science lesson and understand gelatinization and fermentation and nutrients better because we've taught it in a practical way in here. But now actually I put kids at the bottom. And the reason I've done that and separate is because I think once the kids are on site and the kids are loving what you do, everything else falls into place. When the head, the governors, um, the parents and those who control the pair strings see the kids coming in, achieving, doing well, loving it, running to your lesson because they adore it, you've got more bargaining power. So I thought I'd give you a flavour, no pun intended, of some of the dishes we do in year seven. This isn't all of them and they change and it depends on the seasons, it depends on the skills. Um, there are sweet things in there and we try and focus on skills. So for instance, the tartu chocolat, we put a little bit of molden on there as a flavour enhancer. But also we make um, uh, like a pea and ham tart from that as well. So, so doing the shortbread, uh, shortcrust pastry, uh, learning to blind bake. Uh, the curry in a hurry is a big, is a big favourite. Um, we do try and take inspiration for what the kids are enjoying. And they tell me they saw something on TikTok and we see how we can get it in there. But all of these have nice skills. They have weighing and measuring. They're using hobs, grills. You can make them seasonal. You can adapt them for various nutritional needs and religious requirements. They're, they're sort of more, I think, again, was it Louise who said in the chat, they're frameworks that you can work on and vary. Boff down there was back of the fridge pie. Uh, we did, I did that during lockdown, recorded it in here, and that was just stuff in a pan, sweated off, leftovers that are languishing at the back of the fridge, bit of stock, thicken, topped with some pastry, mashed potato, even crisps, and you've got yourself a dinner. And then year eight, uh, we up it again. Uh, Thai butternut squash soup is something I did for my first year. And I still see parents because my wife's still at the school. We still say they cook it all the time. Um, the uh, beetroot brownie or the courgette and lemon cake um, is an interesting exercise. And we used a fantastic nutrition modeling tool on food of fact of life to compare traditional cake and brownie recipes to that and see reduction in sugar, increase in fiber, that kind of thing. Things like the cassoulet. Um, I, I'm sorry, I forgot the chap's name, who mentioned about how we frame and we phrase the types of our dishes. Well, cassoulet is just sausage and beans, really, isn't it? But straight away, elevating it, raises that aspiration. So we, we try and adapt, um, we try and include, and these change year on year. The truffled mac and cheese, not even my budget will stretch the truffles. So one small bottle of truffle oil, um, again, can elevate it. And it's purely optional. I thought we'd show you some of the dishes we've been doing. Um, and we've got uh, assessment dish from year nine on the far left. That was a passion fruit panna cotta with some spiced biscuits, souffle. We do sweet and savory. Uh, rolling pasta from year eight. Uh, in year eight, they can dye it different colors. So uh, cuttlefish ink on Amazon's relatively inexpensive. Pureed spinach, pureed beetroot, we turn it different colors. Um, the middle dish is another event we did. Um, our school has a um, link with Mandarin Excellence Programme. So we cooked for the Chinese ambassador. Um, so we did a dish there. More, um, some fish filleting on the far right where we did a soused and um, uh, south mackerel that blowtorched. And we like to lay out the ingredients as well so the kids can see the fresh produce, identify, understand what they're cooking, and they work in teams. Pheasant, 
uh, one young man, his parents um, have dogs and they do the beating um, at shoots. I mean, how often are these kids in our situation going to go on a £2,000 pheasant or grouse shoot? And they come in and the lesson will change and we'll pluck and cook some Kentucky fried pheasants, butchery skills, more fermentation with balloons. Um, and the top right dish, a young lady who'd spent two years in hospital. That was her assessment dish for year 11, just before lockdown hit. You can see Grub Club there in the middle. They were our quick pizzas on whole meal um, like tortilla wraps, and they were done very quick with leftovers. And top right, we like to enhance that culture capsule, get kids out. That was at Digbeth Dining Club, uh, so some street food. And again, we're, you know, we've made the case that we're important. So we get the time to go to trips like that in Borough Market. That was a whistle stop tour. I'm not sure of timings. I'm not sure how I did there, Louise. I've got my Twitter and Insta on there. Uh, that was the Thai butternut squash soup being prepared. Like I said, not all the kitchens I've been in, and Louise will know this, are uh, lovely and shiny like this one. Many of them, hinges I was masking tape in the morning to make sure they didn't drop on toes. Taps that I was having to silicate myself. So it is a long journey, but it is worth persisting with. Thanks very much.